Good morning. Unfortunately, due to other commitments, I wasn't able to join you this morning, but I have accepted the invitation to share my thoughts with you via this video message. I firmly believe that in our professional life, we women face two main challenges. Access to employment, which encompasses a good work-life balance, and access to higher and better paid positions in the working world. When considering challenges associated with joining the job market, it is imperative that life-work balance is given the importance it deserves. However, I believe that ensuring a good work-life balance model is not simply a women's issue, and benefiting from a healthy work-life balance can prove useful for all the family. It is not simply the private sector that needs to work hand-in-hand -hand with families. Direct assistance, such as free childcare, and incentives aimed at bringing mothers back into the fold are equally crucial. During 2013, the Maltese government took on this challenge and introduced free childcare for working parents, an investment of 3.8 million euros towards tangible work-life balance and assistance for women with young children who want to return to work. This wasn't a disjointed bolt in the dark. Other initiatives were taken. One such initiative is the recent introduction of a five-year tax break for women over 40 who enter the job market while their husbands pay tax rates based on a joint computation. After the landmark introduction of childcare, another milestone was the announcement whereby the government launched a fund for the payment of maternity leave in order to alleviate pressures from individual employers who have to financially compensate female employees who go on maternity leave. On the same note, the Maltese government also introduced maternity benefits for self-employed women. All these initiatives and the general policy push have given value to further inclusion of women in the job market. This has resulted in an increase of 5.6% of women in employment over the last few months. But let's be clear, this is nowhere close to our targets, but it is certainly a good start. There are other initiatives which can be implemented by the private sector, and it is commendable to know that some businesses already do this. Measures include flexible working hours, reduced hours, teleworking and job sharing, to mention just a few. I strongly believe that women can perform brilliantly in any kind of position, be it public service, politics or the private sector. Women are hard workers and committed people who can achieve what they believe in. We do not need favours, but empowerment and opportunities. And that is why I'm a strong believer in mentoring and guiding our young girls and teenagers in order to empower them further in taking the necessary plunge. Society in general and employers are to respect and support parents' decisions in their efforts to find the right balance between their family life and their career advancement. In order to change the current situation, where more young women graduates from tertiary education but less women enter the workforce, we need to act together. More men need to realize that empowering women to achieve their full potential will not affect them negatively but will lead to healthier family life. In the end, I believe this all boils down to teamwork. And as a final comment, I must state that we need to shift from simply focusing on the needs of women to focusing on the needs of the parents, as two individuals working as one unit. Ultimately, we need both parents to be happily involved in the employment, professional or public sphere. And this means that in all the decisions we take, we need to address the family as one nucleus. I will personally do my utmost to contribute to this discussion in the different fora, both locally and in the European Parliament. While wishing you success for the rest of this interesting conference, I send you my warmest regards from Brussels.